Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be solving equations that involve radicals. We're going to start with 3 square root of 3 over 5 equal to x over 1 minus the square root of 3. For our first step, we're going to cross multiply. So we're multiplying 3 square root of 3 times 1 minus the square root of 3 equal to 5x. Notice that I put the binomial 1 minus the square root of 3 in parentheses. That's to remind me to distribute the 3 square root of 3. So you're going to take 3 square root of 3 times 1, and 3 square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is a negative, and say minus 3 square root of 3 square root of 3. Now we're going to simplify that. So we have 3 square root of 3 times square root of 3. These last two become 3 times another 3 is 9. So you have 3 squared of 3 minus 9 equals 5x, and then to isolate x, we're going to divide by 5. So we have our answer for x, and we want to check our work. So where we have x in our original equation, we're going to put 3 squared of 3 minus 9 all over 5. And we want to find out if that's equal to 3 squared of 3 over 5. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator and then just multiply straight across. So with the 1, we still have 3 squares of 3 minus 9, but I manipulated it a little bit here. I rewrote it in this format that we had here. And I did that because I saw in the denominator that I had a 1 minus the square root of 3. And I saw over here that there's no subtraction or addition of terms. So I need to be able to factor out this 1 minus the square root of 3. So I rewrote it this way so I can do that. So I factored out the 3 square root of 3. And notice that um, if you take the 3 square root of 3 and divide it into the first term, you get 1. And if you divide it into the second term, you're left with a square root of 3. So now you can see that those 1 minus square root of 3 is going to cancel. And we're left with 3 square root of 3 over 5, just like we have on the left side. So it checks out, and we did our work correctly. Let's try our next one. We have x over 1 minus the square root of 5 equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4, and we want to isolate x. So for our first step, we're going to cross multiply. So we have 4x equals 1 minus the square root of 5 times 1 plus the square root of 5. Again, these are binomials, so you put them in parentheses, and it will remind you, in this case, to FOIL, which is our next step. So multiplying our first terms together, 1 times 1, 1 times the square root of 5, and negative square root of 5 times 1. And negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5 gives us negative square root of 25, or 5. Now we're going to combine like terms. So our inner and outer terms this time cancel. These two terms are actually conjugates of each other, so it actually um, gets rid of the radical for us. So you have 1 minus the square root of 5, which is negative 4. And then you're going to divide by 4, so you get negative 1 for x. Now we're going to check our work. So we're going to replace x with negative 1. Now these two sides of the equation don't look exactly like each other, but we're going to manipulate the left side to make it look like the right side by rationalizing it. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate, which is the 1 plus the square root of 5. So our numerator just becomes negative 1 minus square root of 5, and our denominator is going to give us 1 minus 5. Remember, your inner and outer are canceling each other. So we have negative 4, 1 minus square root of 5 over negative 4, and just multiply every single term by negative 1. So you get 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4, and now it looks like our right side, so it checks. For our next problem, we have x squared to 2 plus 2 squared to 2 equals 3 squared to 6. So for our first step, we're going to um, bring our 2 squared to 2 over to the other side by subtracting it from both sides of the equation. All right, so 3 squared to 6 and 2 squared to 2 are not like terms. So our next step will be to divide by the square root of 2. Now the square root of 2 can be divided into both of those terms. So we're going to divide the 3 square roots of 2 by 2 and the negative 2 square roots of 2 by 2. So that gives us 3 square roots of 3 minus 2 is our final answer. 
Now we're going to check our work. So where we have x in our original equation, we're going to replace it with 3 squared of 3 minus 2. So we have that as a quantity, so again I put that in parentheses because it's a binomial. And I'm going to distribute the square root of 2. So I have 3 square root of 3 times 2, which gives us 3 square root of 6, negative 2 square root of 2, and a positive 2 square root of 2. The last two terms cancel each other, so we're left with 3 square root of 6, and it checks out. For our next problem, we have 3 minus the square root of 2 over 1 plus the square root of 2 equal to x over 3 minus the square root of 2. So again, for our first step, we're going to cross multiply. And we have uh, three binomials in this case. I'll need to go in parentheses. So on the left side, we're going to distribute or FOIL. So we have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 square roots of 2, negative, because we had a negative here. Another negative 3 square roots of 2. And then we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive square root of 2 times square root of 2, or square root of 4, which is 2. Now we're going to combine like terms on the left side. So you have 9 and 2 make 11. And we have 2 negative 3 square roots of 2, or 6 of them. Now we're going to divide both sides by 1 plus the square root of 2. And we get our answer for x, which is 11 minus 6 square roots of 2 over 1 plus the square root of 2. But we want to rationalize that. So we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by 1 minus the square root of 2. Multiplying by the conjugate helps us to clear out the radicals in the denominator. So you have 1, our outer and inner terms cancel. Our last terms gives us negative square roots of 4 or 2. In the numerator, I distributed um, the 11 and 11 times square root of 2 and negative 6 square roots of 2 times 1 and negative 6 square roots of 2 times square root of 2 gives us 6 times 4 um, square root of 4 or 6 times 2 which is 12. Combining the like terms you have 23 minus 17 square roots of 2 over negative 1 and then I just multiplied everything by sorry about that I multiplied everything by negative 1 so um, all I did was actually just change the signs on these and I reordered them. So I get this as my final answer. This one's a little bit more difficult to check, but you might want to do it for extra practice. Just replace your x with 17 square roots of 2 minus 23, and then see if you can make the two sides equal. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.